What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of JAR. JAR, for those of you that may be new, stands for Joe. And Amy. Review. It's our weekly show where we review the magic stories as they're posted on Wizards' website. And he, this week, we are here for episode two of five of the uh, Guilds of Ravnica stories with Testing the Dark Waters. And as all of these will be and have been, it is by Nikki Drayden. My quick review at the top of this one. This one was great. Last week's was cool. I think this one was better, in my opinion. And I think it was... It, it did a great job of showcasing a lot more, in my opinion, of what Ravnica is about. Showing more of the guilds than last week. Um, like little, Even just little snippets here and there. It really showed you what each of the guilds were about, while still focusing on only one character. So I thought that that was really good. And, uh, I mean, we'll get more into it, but even just the writing style in general, the descriptions, etc., I thought this story was really, really good. What, what about you? I loved the uh, descriptions. I thought they were um, very vivid um, and disgusting at times. Um, on purpose. Right. Um, <laughs> they did their job. It was fun, yeah. though. It oh, was, yeah. um, you know, it had a... It had a momentum. Um, it had, um, I don't know. It, it was fun. It was, um, you know, it was gross. It was fun. It was fast moving. It was, you know, it just, it was very descriptive. It had a lot of stuff in it. I was going to say, I think it, it had good pacing. I think that it's been a long time since I've been able to say that I really feel like they fit a lot of stuff into one story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been a long time since I've said that. Yeah. And for this one, it's definitely true. Yeah. And as we've been doing with a lot of the more recent stories, if you go back to earlier jars, we haven't really done it. But but for this one, if you have not read the story yet, at because of this, we highly encourage that you go read it before watching this review. Because as we always say, we review, we do not summarize. And so what you can do if you don't know where to find the stories is go to the description box below. And we have a link to that article right there. And feel free to go read it. It wasn't oppressively long, but it was not short, I right. will say. Um, it took us an amount of time to get through it that, you know, was at least somewhat noticeable. Um, but and it was totally it worth it. Drag. Oh, no, not at all. Um, no, it was it definitely was, worth it. It was good. So, like I said, we encourage you to go do that before coming back, hopefully, to coming back and, and watching the rest of this review. But, onto the full review itself, this was an is it themed story at least it was trying to be yes this was <laughs> less an is it themed story this week than it was a demir themed story last week when we focused on a demir agent story <laughs> um this week we had i'm gonna call her lay bay it could be lay bet I, I i don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced i kind of looked at it as if it were french inspired lay bay um, but I, I could be wrong. I don't speak French. As, as I believe I've had to say on this show before. <laughs> so. See, I feel like, well, I feel like if it's more, like, Irish maybe, then it'd be like Lee. Lee bet? Lee bay? Okay. I, I, do, I genuinely don't know. If you're aware and you want to try to spell it phonetically in the comments, please feel free, with, as with anything, to, uh, to, to teach us. We, we Lee appreciate bet. it. Leave it, yeah. <laughs> um, so, but we meet her in the beginning, and honestly, I didn't, we didn't find out her name unless I missed it in the beginning. We didn't find out her name until more than halfway through when, um, I have it, Tamsin says it. Because she, the character, despite the fact that this was basically a first-person narration type of a story where she's literally dictating her life to us and her occurrences of, like, you know, I haven't felt this bad since this happened. Like, she's not saying that to anyone but the reader. Right. So she's narrating to us in first person about her own life. And so she, even though that is happening, she doesn't introduce herself to us in the beginning. And so we have to wait until Tamsin says it later on in the story, which mm -hmm. was, I guess, somewhat confusing. Because, like, as I'm reading through the story, I'm sitting there going, okay, so it's, it's an is it woman, right? A, a, a scientist, a female scientist of the Is It Guild, but past that, I don't, I don't know who she is. I don't know her name. Although you find out who she is 
as a character uh, through the fact that she is wading through a sewer at the beginning of the story yeah. with a Golgari guide. And I think that's where Amy was pointing out. That's where you get a lot of your disgusting moments. Oh. We're in the sewers. Oh. Amazing imagery. Amy was so grossed out. And I'm sitting there with this huge <laughs> smile on my face. I'm like, I love this. And she's like, that's nasty. It's disgusting. And again, as I said, completely purposeful that it was that way. So, so good. I, I wrote some of the things here. And I, I wrote something that I wanted to point out. So, so um, Liebit <laughs> is, is going through the sewers with her Golgari guide, Kelteth. And Kelteth is kind of being able to guide her through the sewers. He's showing her the fatbergs that she has to come across icebergs of fat that are clogging so up the disgusting. sewer. So My awesome. God. Awesome. Why? I loved it. Um, and, and in doing so, uh, she comments on the fact that Kelteth is like really laid back and it's probably because he is eating the iridescent mushroom patch oh. that is growing near his armpit. Oh, awesome. <laughs> I was all about that part. But what I wrote down, which I don't think I mentioned to you, but think about it this way. We just came from Ixalan a little bit ago, right? We, we did Corset 2019, but we were in the Ixalan stories and we had Varaska. And when we really got to meet Varaska through Jace's interactions with her, we got to find out that Varaska is a pretty civilized character considering that she's a member of the Golgari, and in the, the art for this set, at least, we see her kind of regressing almost, at least, you know, in terms of she went from, like, flowing pirate dresses to now just being covered in fungus. And, like, using the, that fungus as beautiful dresses, I mean, um, you know, in, in the different arts that we see of her, the, the fungus is used in that way, but at the same time, we knew Varaska from Ixalan as a woman who loved to go to coffee shops and read books and just sit and be seemingly very cultured and, and relax in, in doing those things. And then you contrast that with a Golgari guide who is walking through the sewers eating the mushroom growths out of his armpits. It's just such a difference. And I don't think that it's necessarily implying that that's how the Golgari are now, just all of them. I, I think it's just showing the range that you can have within a guild like the Golgari, where you can have a Varaska, who, granted, is not originally of the Golgari, right? She's just a Gorgon, um, but who works within the Golgari confines, but then you have a Golgari agent or a Golgari guide like this, uh, you know, Keltef that we see here, who just is that way and is just so kind of casually disgusting, <laughs> not, not as cultured, I guess is the word, as, as Varaska. That's just something that, that I keyed in on when reading that. I don't know if that okay. was something as obvious to, to other people. That's definitely not something I thought about. Does it make sense, though, or am I off the mark here? What do you think? I don't know. Okay. Give I us your... I feel like I can't say. Okay. Give us your thoughts, as always. Um, so, then we have, um, like I said, you have the, the concept of these fatbergs in the sewer. You have all the things that are, like, stuck into the fatbergs and yeah. the fact that um, we hear about the different items that are found in the fatberg that are indicative of all of the different guilds. Like there's a Boros helmet and there's something from the Simic and there's something here and something there. And so it kind of indicates to you that it, it has nothing to do with the area that they're in. It's no one is immune from the sewers of city life, mm -hmm. right? The sewers in any major metropolitan city are probably disgusting yeah. because they are sewers in a city. And that's just kind of how it works. And, and they gave the, the description in this story that was given was, you know, the filth floating in the water bouncing off of her protection spell and the, her nausea of 
being on the fat bird, but to be honest, she was nauseous the whole time, despite the fact that she had cast a nausea, anti-nausea spell on right. herself. So it just indicates to you, again, it's, it's a sewer, right? But it's also a sewer in a world that is based in magic. And so, and I don't just mean magic gathering, I mean that they are based in magical powers, abilities, etc. Because you have things like the rat that she comes across, where she's looking at it and she's like, oh, it's so gross, and it's squeaking, but it's so enticing. I'm, I'm going to touch it. And then she reaches her hand down towards it, and the, the Golgari guy, you know, knocks it out with a piece of concrete or whatever, and he's like, oh, that's a, that's a sewer siren. A what? <laughs> a sewer siren? It's a rat? And he says, the uh, Keltaf says that the only way that the sewer sirens can bite you is if you put your hand in its mouth? Okay, that's real weird. And, yeah. and just the fact that, like, even just the little things, because after that happens, you hear about the sewer siren, and you learn about it, and then... Liebet, again, I'm probably saying it wrong, but that Liebet then comments on wiping the sewer water, the sewer backsplash from her face, because when the, the, the concrete hit the water, there was splashback. Speaking Ew. of disgusting, she got sewer water on her face. I hope that protection spell was her whole body and not just her legs. Right. Ugh, God. So it, and again, I'm all about it. I think it's great, but that's, that's real gross. Um, <clears throat> Would the protection spell have helped if the rat had bit her? I would assume not. Because she wanted to pet it was, was the thing, right? She right. was compelled to pet it. So either there was no protection spell up there um, or she like would have, I guess, taken it down to experience petting this cute rat that wanted to be pet by her. No, stop. Okay, we're Never stopping. Mind. Yes. Talk to Amy all about it in the comments. Don't, don't do that. Uh, she won't, she doesn't like that. Um, so, and then, then you run into a lot, like getting out of the sewers, you run into a lot more of the, the descriptions of the different guilds. I mean, everything in this sewer to me screamed Golgari, not just because of the guide, but th then talking about the reclaimers getting the, the dead bodies and things like that. And you, you later we find out about some of the Simic some Simic stuff and more is it things, and then in the end, some Demir things. And yet, about halfway through the story, I noticed some Demir stuff as well, but it wasn't specifically Demir, it was in the is it guild. Now, for those of us who have played draft, I tend, at least guilds of Ravnica draft, I have tended toward a Sultai build where I go Demir splashing Golgari or Golgari splashing Demir because those three colors work really well together. But you could also go Demir splashing Is it or Is it splashing Demir since they each share the color of blue between one another. And the reason that that works, that the reason that I bring that up, I should say, is because when the main character here is talking about the Is it and looking at the Fatberg, she mentions the fact that the, the, the machine that she's using is going crazy in this one section because it's either something that the Izzet have not discovered yet, or something that the Izzet have been trying to keep a secret. That should have raised off red flags or sent off bells in your head, because who are the secret keepers on Dominaria? Or on Dominaria, wow, on Ravnica, sorry, I am months beforehand. Uh, who are the secret keepers on Ravnica? The Demir. Demir. They literally deal in secrets. And so, sure, maybe that's why the is it are keeping it a secret, because as, <coughs> excuse me, my goodness, as many people in the Vorthos community have pointed out recently, at least spe specifically with the coming up of this set, the Demir are no longer secret. They're no longer hidden. That's why at the end of this story, she knows that Tamsin is a Demir agent. She knows that she's a Demir spy. That's not a question as to, like, what do you mean? What's a Demir? Right. They know who the Demir are, despite the fact that at the end, at the maze's end, at the, at the top of this poster, there is no Demir column because 
that was the time where the Demir were not as much a thing. Now they are. They're a lot more out in the open. They're a lot more willing to deal in that way. But so maybe that's why the is it are trying to keep it secret. But just that whole sequence of like, I'm here to do this job, but it this machine wasn't programmed with this material in it to, to identify this material that's making these fatbergs electric proof. And so maybe that's because we've actually never discovered it before, or maybe it's because they want to keep it a secret and they don't want it so readily stealable, basically, yeah. because that, that, um, that item leaves the laboratory. And so anybody could just pick it up off of uh, uh, a scientist. Yeah. And so at first in my head, it was like, whoa, the is it are being a little bit demure right here. And then it was like, no, maybe it's literally the opposite where sure, maybe they're dabbling in demure concepts, but it's to battle against them kind of mm -hmm. a thing to, to keep their secrets a secret. Right. Um, so that was just something that I, that I pointed out. And it's why it led me to say in the beginning what, what you were agreeing with is that there was a lot more inter-guild relationships in this story than there were in the last one where it was much, much more heavily demure focused in the last story. And it, whereas this one was kind of under the, the guise of an is it story. Right. But there was demure, there was Golgari, there was Simic in here and... You know, There's so, a lot going on. Right. So if you hadn't told me at the top, this is an Izzet story, like, the main character was from the Izzet Guild, but that does not, would not have in my head made this automatically an Izzet only story. Um, oh, I also called this main character, I said this to Amy, um, and I'm somewhat joking, somewhat genuinely not, <clears throat> but I think this story was... Uh, the answer to, um, or was to give us a millennial character. Yeah. Seriously, it really seemed like that. And, and I wrote like, you know, hashtag relatable, hashtag millennial problems, because <laughs> she talks about the fact that she's like, I, you know, I work in this lab, but there's all these people above me because I work with all these Vidalkin, and, you know, the only way that I'm ever going to move up in this lab is if somebody retires or if somebody dies. I don't, I don't know what demographic you are of or what your life experiences are, person who is watching this video, but I can assure you there are people out there who have felt this way. <laughs> One of them might be sitting on this, you know, chair over here somewhere. It's me. But, uh, but it, it depends on the profession. It depends on the job. I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, get heavily into political statements or, or generational comments or whatever. Yeah, That's no. just, there no. just is no moving up in my job. <laughs> But it's but it's it's something that that a lot of people have run into as an issue where it's like oh so the the aging workforce isn't aging out they're just staying instead of actually retiring and so the jobs that we want to move into are being held by people that are way over qualified for them so the entry level positions aren't available it's it's again moving back to the story it's it's not a it's not necessarily a wholly political commentary but i just wanted to point out that it, it seems so much like this you know that, that, that this story was so much catering to the real world and what's going on in the real world these days and the fact that then you get the instance of where she's like well i got fired so they can take their job and shove it i'm gonna do it on my own and so they go off and do it on their own because hey, it's 2018 and the internet's a thing and you can look up almost anything you need to look up. If you have the startup capital, anybody can try, right? And people are, you know, doing their own podcasts and their own <laughs> YouTube channels uh, and, and trying to, to do these things to branch out into aspects of things that they're passionate about and things that they enjoy, even if they cannot find a way traditionally to make money doing it through the proper channels or again, the traditional channels. And that's uh, in my estimation, like beat for beat, what happened in this story mm -hmm. is that she did exactly what she was supposed to be doing. She did something on the side that she maybe wasn't supposed to do, but she found out something with her own skills and her own abilities that she wanted to take back to her boss. And she had these big grandiose ideas of, 
I'm going to go and I'm going to get this done and it's going to be great and I'm going to be the boss. He's going to answer to me. And then she shows up and he's like, you discovered it with that thing that you stole and then broke and you're filthy and covered in sewer water and you want me to give you a higher position, you're fired. And she's like, oh, right, that doesn't make sense, does it? She had kind of gotten in her own head and all excited about, you know, she was looking too specifically and wasn't looking at the big picture. She wasn't seeing the forest for the trees. Oh, I don't see it that way. Okay, go ahead, please. I, I, I think she was inspired. Mm-hmm. And she got excited about her discovery. Mm hmm Brought it to, you know, the old guy who no longer cares. Um, you know, and, and doesn't have that flicker of ambition and drive in his heart mm -hmm. and doesn't, and can no longer see a good discovery as a good discovery, um, and can only see her appearance and her smell and the fact that she stole something you know, and and that she broke it, so the money that it's now going to cost him to right. replace it. Right. Yeah. No, that's fair. So you know, fair it's point. it's another millennial thing <laughs> where you know the the innovative millennial is so focused on the innovation that when they present it to, um, you know, the head of the company, all the head of the company can say is, uh, "You owe me a bunch of money." Um, you don't deserve uh, what you're asking for, um, and you're fired. Yep. And, and like I said, and then she goes off on her own and starts to do it herself. And, and as she walks out, she takes some dead lab rats with her, which she is able to exchange for Tamsin, basically. Um, and we find out about Tamsin later, but uh, we get to find out that Tamsin is great, and Liebit, Lebe, the, the main character, says to Tamsin, she's like, okay, thanks for the interview, you know, the, they worked together for like three hours, I think it was, and it's yeah. like, hey, thanks for the interview, thanks for the free internship, if we're, if we're going with millennial terminology, <laughs> uh, thanks for the free internship, I've got more people to interview, and Tamsin's like, are you serious? We just did all this stuff together, you've got to be kidding me. And she's like, all right, well, uh, fine, I guess you were good, you know, but I can't really pay you yet. And Tamsin's like, who cares? Let's just do it. And we find out later there are ulterior motives to that reason, right. you know, for, for that. But again, these days you will find people who are passionate enough where they'll be like, you know what? Money isn't that big of a deal right now. Let's just make something. And then, you know, hopefully we, we make some money from it, but let's at least work on what we're making first, Right whether it's launching an app or a dot-com company or something like that, like, that's what is the, whether it's unfortunate or fortunate, that is more so the norm these days um, of people trying to turn and, and find alternative revenue sources because the the traditional job market has failed them or whatever, whatever you want to say about it. Or but. has failed as a whole. <laughs> like I said. Um, so we find that and then... I went to school for business. <laughs> That's true, she did. And I am swimming in student loan debt. Uh, so <laughs> I have an okay job, but I am swimming in it. I am, and in fact, straight up drowning in it would be, would be a, a more fair statement. But... I haven't I paid a cent on mine in <laughs> God knows how long. <laughs> Leave your hashtag millennial problems <laughs> in the comments down below. Holy crap. Ah, uh, that's real depressing. Anyway, whoa, let's get out of this topic. <laughs> and let's talk about, we talked about this last week, and I will link last week's episode at the end, as I always do, if you missed it. Because, as I said, it was the first of five. This is the second of five. Last week's talked about the Demir. It was another guy struggling to make money, struggling to feed his family, and... We talked about the fact that you were rooting for this guy in the beginning. And then three quarters of the way through, maybe like halfway through, it just flipped on its head out of nowhere. And you were like, what the hell just happened? 
Why did he do this stupid thing? Right. Now he's about to die and he totally deserves it. Right. What just happened? Because we, I was rooting for him in the beginning where I was like, come on, dude, you got this. You can do it. Like he had imposter syndrome where he's like, I really don't think I'm good enough for this, but I'm going to keep trying because I need to. And then he just did a boneheaded thing when he finally got what he needed. And come this week, I don't think it was as egregious, but I still felt like there was that moment. There was that moment where you're, the story's going in one direction and then, bam, it just falls off in a different direction. <laughs> where you literally, you're, you're in the lab. They did the testing on the mice, right, for this, for this now unsanctioned lab. They do the testing on the mice and it works. And they're like, and, and she's super excited. She's like, this is great. I'm going to go right to the board and I'm going to get. And then she kind of learns from her past mistake a little bit, like you were talking about. So instead of being so excited and just running to the first authority figure she can find to brag about her findings. Well, it's not even to brag, just to be excited about And to be innovation. recognized, right. I and mean, to be recognized for it and, and get what she earned yeah. through finding this. But instead of doing that, she does the right thing. And she's like, wait a minute, the board's not going to do a damn thing for me until I start human trials. And I have, or humanoid trials. And I have proof of it working on humanoids. But I can't pay anybody to test this on because I don't have any money. So um, Tamsin's like, you know what? I got this. And she goes and she gets all these test subjects and brings them back. And... And... And she, she's like, how did you do that? How did you get... She's like, oh, I told them we'd pay them 200 whatever, zenny or whatever the, the, the uh, money is here. She's like, 200 each? I can't pay them that. She's like, don't worry about it. Just send them in and then send them back out after you've done the test. And, and the test works. Yeah. And she's super excited and she's super happy. And Tamsin is super happy as well that they, they finally did it. And then after everybody's out in the hall, you know, Liebitz like... Uh, how are we going to pay them now? They're all sitting out there waiting. And Tamsin's like, well... And Liebitz's like, what? And then realizes what Tamsin's getting at. I basically already killed them. Well, Tamsin says that afterwards, but Le makes Liebit make the decision first. Right. Because as Liebit said, she's like, this is my assignment. I need to do... You know, it, it's, it's my... Um, experiment, right. and it's my call. It's my it's decision. Like she didn't get assigned to do it. No, it's my it's my experiment. It's my lab. It's my decision. And she talked about euthanizing the rats after right. all these things, and and then says like, oh, am I going to have to actually do this to these humans or these humanoids? You know, there were goblins or whatever. And um, and then talking about that ambition and that drive, she saw a goblin, someone with that similar ambition and drive. And that is the only thing that convinced her not to do it because she was all about it. Okay. She was like, okay, well, maybe I'll just have to kill them. And, you know, it was tough in the beginning with the rats, but then I got used to it, so I can right. get used to it with these guys too. And, no. and I'm sitting there going, what is happening right now? And it literally, I, I, it, I immediately flash back to last week. And I was like, is this really, is this just going to happen every week where there's just that tipping point? Where you're just like, oh, the story's going this way, I get it. What? And then it just goes in that completely other direction. And it kind of didn't, right? Like, it, it, it amped up to that point, and then she falters a bit, and she's like, I'm going to kill them. And then she's like, you know what? No, I'm not. And Tamsin goes, don't worry about it, I already did it. And then she feels bad about that having happened. Right. Which is good. That right. is character growth. That is character progression. That's a good thing. We like to see that in our protagonists. Right. They feel bad about other innocent people dying. That is, a, <laughs> that is a big plus. Big plus, guys. And then she goes and subjects herself to some testing. Some civic testing. And in doing so, she lies on one of the forms. Right. And she's like, I haven't been you know, exposed to growth hormone or... Or electric whatever, you know, the, whatever they warned her about <laughs> that she shouldn't have been exposed to. Right. And she was not only exposed to one, but both in her last and experiment. within the last 24 hours. Yeah, or was it, I think, they had said seven days. She said this last experiment, which very well may have been the or last Or no, whatever. it was within the same day. Yeah. I think it was earlier that day. Regardless. 
she was exposed to it. And so they, they run her through a bunch of different tests and the first ones go fine. Then she comes across this one where she has to lie on the form so that they'll actually do the test. They do it and she starts changing. She, her, her like vertebra change and her, her hands grow claws and, and she like rakes the scientist and then runs out and, and then says, I belong in the sewer. <laughs> and goes and she goes she's like that, that's the only place where i belong i'm disgusting and, and so she goes back to the sewer and this is the part that i was a little confused by because then tamson shows up in the sewer with the the machine that shoots the the electricity balls or whatever and i immediately said to myself i'm like how did tamson know that she was going to be in the sewers whereas lee bay is just like Hey, Tamsin, listen, I don't have your money yet. And that's the first thing she says. Even though she's being met up with in the sewers? At least that's what I... That's how I read it. Maybe I read it wrong. But why would you not go... Instead of being like, Tamsin, I don't have your money yet. Why wouldn't you go, Tamsin, how the hell did you know I was in a sewer? I just ran here from that test that I did by myself. I was a little confused by that. And maybe... Yeah. Maybe it's that I misread it and she said she was going to go to the sewers but then ended up back at her lab instead. But no, because she was in the sewer because the fight was with yeah. a fat bird behind her and so she was in the it sewer. was blatantly in the sewer. So how did Tamsin know where she was? And Tamsin how did... knew where she was because she was keeping tabs on her because well, she was a demure agent. Correct. And that is explainable. What is not explainable is how Libe was not just like, what are you doing here? How did you well, follow me here? Well, and that was a divisive story thing. Because instead of saying, well, what are you doing here? You know, it was like, oh, I don't have your money. You know, still like me as a character. And then you kind of come to find out that she's an Amir agent. Well, not only that, but you know, I mean... instead of just, oh... You followed me to the sewer? You must be a Demure agent. Well, you know, like... Right. They just wanted to you know, build to it a bit more, I think. I, I guess. It just doesn't make sense. She didn't belong there. How did she know? That and the fact that neither of them comment on the fact that Li Bei is now mutated? Yeah. Like, neither of them mention that. Li Bei is not like, don't worry, this is, you know, something happened, there was an experiment failed by the Simic or something, and, and Tamsin doesn't mention it either? It was just so weird. It was like, yeah, why, really weird. why is no one talking about any of these things that are glaringly obvious to me right now? <laughs> it makes no sense. And then, like you said, they, they start very casually with like, oh, I don't have your money intense. Like, I don't care about the money. But, and then, and then Lee Bay's like, wait, your last chemistry, you didn't, you, you did kill them. It wasn't an accident, was it? And that's when Tamsin's like, there was none. I just, I lied to you. And they were like, oh my God. You're a shapeshifter, you're a Demir spy, and they fight, and then Tamsin gets killed, and whatever. But but it was just, it, that moment was that tipping point for me, again, yeah. in this story. It was the same thing, again, I don't think it was as egregious as last week, because there was, there was that, like, di like that moment, redeeming moment, I couldn't think of the word, yeah. that redeeming moment where she's like, sure, fine, I have to kill all these test subjects, you know what, I can't. That one goblin, she had a promising life. I can't do it to her. And because I can't kill her, I can't kill any of them because otherwise she'll be there to notice it. And then, sure, Tamsin was the one who did it, but Tamsin's the Demir spy, we find out later on. So Tamsin did it, and the, the our main character, our protagonist, our hero, is so distraught about it that she goes on this downward spiral, which then makes her transform into... Like, that's... It still got weird. Yeah. But there was at least a redemption for her as a character there. Yeah. And you still like her. At least I did, right? Yeah. I still think she was a redeeming character at the end of the story. Whereas, like I said, last week, that dude deserved everything he got. Because he was so dumb. Like, he was yeah. so dumb. Yeah, he really was. But this week, like in the end, when she, like, kills Tamsin... And then says, I feel the monster moving underneath my skin. Like, let's go do this thing. Both of us were like, hell yeah, go do it. Because she's a redeeming character. We like her. Because she has had progression and she didn't screw it up. No. <laughs> she kind of screwed it up. Kind of. But it, I would say, like, lying on the form is one thing. And that I would 
chalk up to desperation. Yeah. And so I get that. But the Tamsin thing was not her fault. She didn't know that. Right. And then she was able to overcome it and kill her using ingenuity by building something out of what she found in that sewer and in that fatberg. So I find that to be great. I mean, that's a very, to me, that's a very classic hero story where yeah. you have the, the, you know, rising action of her being the hero, finding those things. And sure, you face some hardship in getting fired, but you go off on your own path. You have that temptation to go to the evil side where you are, um, you're like told we have to kill these people, but you, you fight against the temptation and you say no. And then you have that redemption at the end where you get to kill, uh, your antagonizer right. in, in Tamsin, who is a murderer in many different respects. Right, and, and was going to steal your research and give it away. And yes. Your life's work, your ambition, your dream, and kill you in the process, right. obviously. Uh, and so she was able to redeem herself in so many different ways that even in the end when, again, her desperation led her to have this mutation that eventually went away, but she could still feel it underneath the surface, which means maybe she can control it now. Um, that was the moment where you were like, okay, cool. So these are your abilities. I get that. And you're able to root for her and, and, and feel good about that. And so I appreciated that. I thought that, that this story still had that kind of moment where it like went in the other direction, yeah. but I feel like she, as the main character was able to keep her likability okay. and redeem herself throughout the story from beginning to end, unlike last week where I felt like there was a little bit of a disconnect there. And again, Amy and I have had this discussion many times and it's something that I have had to learn from Amy and from, from some of the viewers in the past. Not every character needs to be black or white. And I don't definitely don't mean race there, but I mean like... <laughs> There are areas of gray, right? You don't, not every character is lily white versus pure evil. There is, there are shades of gray in the middle and every character can go through change and growth and etc. So you can have that guy from last week who was down on his luck going from that to you made a huge mistake and you screwed up your whole life and you suck and you deserve everything that happens to you. <laughs> or you could have somebody like this week where like, no, nope, you stumble a little but you pick yourself back up, and even when you're tempted, you you don't go through with it, even if somebody kind of takes that decision out of your hands, but you feel so badly about it that you you spiral yourself yeah. and and deal with it in your own way and are able to conquer it and overcome it, which I loved. And again, I think that's why I liked this story so much. I think it worked super well, um, and I, I... Not that I didn't last week, but I even more so now look forward to the next uh, three weeks of stories where, again, this was, I think, the way that it's going to work because I don't know that I've seen this written anywhere, but it makes sense that last week was the Demir story. This week is the Is It story, which means we still have three more uh, to go for the three that are left in this set. We will then see if there's like a huge gap or anything else. Is there anything more that, that you wanted to mention about this story? That yeah, I, I mean, um, I think... I liked this story and this character because they weren't your typical hero character. Mm -hmm. um, and because the story was interesting, had so many different um, settings and, and um, just, uh, and each one was detailed in its own way. Mm -hmm. And they were so different from one another. Um, it really kept it um, interesting. It really kept it going. Um, in addition to the fact that these characters were so dynamic. Mm hmm Absolutely. Yeah. I, and it, it, again, it worked. I, like, like I said, I think that's why I liked it better than last week's is yeah. because I felt like it made more sense to me than last week's, despite the fact that there was still that confusion for me there at the end with the sewer moment, where it's like, how is no one bringing these right. things up? Because, it, again, it seemed obvious to me, which is why I was like, could, could somebody say something? Could somebody, like, bring this up, maybe? 
But like yeah. Amy said, maybe that wasn't the most important thing in that moment. And you, you know, you kind of write yourself into a corner with that of like it being revealed way too early, you know, way too soon before you want it to be revealed. So the, the Demir agent shapeshifter. Um, I think last week, I think, I think there was some bit of intrigue. Um, and I would say that the characters were somewhat dynamic, but I feel like it was almost like a false sense of, I don't know. Like, it, would you say that only compared to this week or yes, even, okay. Compared to this week. Okay. Because like there was a reason for these characters to be dynamic and I feel like that didn't exist in the last story. I feel like um I, I feel like those characters um kind of I don't know, kind of lived in the world very separate from it. Okay. And 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 I kind of got the sense from the main character that he didn't think that his actions um affected anything. Okay. Um, and, and we don't get that sense here. Um, we get a much more realistic sense of how people actually think and feel, mm -hmm. I feel like. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I would, that's fair. I would say that it, maybe that's just better writing, um, or maybe last week was trying to do something that it just kind of missed the mark, hmm. and I don't necessarily understand what it was that it was trying to convey, but um, it just feels like this one was better writing because it feels like the character development was more realistic and um, had motives. Okay. Okay. That's an interesting point. And, and honestly, let us know. If you liked last week's story better than this one, let us know and let us know why. Yeah. Because we are all about comparing and contrasting opinions. I want That's, to hear what you have to say. As always. We want to hear what you have to say about literally anything. If I didn't ask the question, but you still want to give your opinion, give it. Because I want to hear it. Um, a couple of, of things. Is that it for yeah. this story for you? I, I just think so. I have a couple of uh, uh, kind of announcement-based things for the channel that I wanted to do really quickly before we close out. Um, first, I wanted to give a shout out to, uh, Vorthos Mike. He has put up another one of his art reviews for Guilds of Ravnica. Genuinely, I have not even had time to read it yet, but they have always been fantastic. And so I highly recommend that you go check it out. Um, I'm excited now. You can, you can search Guilds of Ravnica art review. So feel free to go, uh, look that up. Give it a quick Google search or check out Vorthos Mike on Twitter. He was talking about it all day today. Again, Wednesday, when this story came out, uh, this video going out on Thursday. But uh, the other thing is, I talked about it on last week's JAR. Um, tonight, right after I'm yes. done filming this, I am leaving. I am leaving Amy all by her lonesome, which I'm sure she appreciates, uh, <laughs> to go hang out with our good friend Dave over at DAM314 on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash DAM314. By the time you're seeing this video, I will have already streamed with him live. Like I said, I talked about it last week. But... Uh, it will have been up on our Twitter. So if you're not following us on Twitter, these are kind of impromptu things that we do every once in a while. And when I can make the announcement, I do. Um, and I will have tweeted it out beforehand to let everybody know what's coming up. Right. So our Twitter link is down in the description below, but it's also just at geek4allyt on Twitter. Um, but you can go check him out. Like I said, twitch.tv slash DAM314. I'm going to go over there and I'm going to play some Spider-Man on the PS4. Um, it's my second time being there to play it. I'm super looking forward to it at this point, but I'm sure I had an amazing time at the time that you're uh, watching this video. So uh, if you want to go see the VOD, uh, please go to his Twitch channel and check it out. Give him a follow. Give him a subscribe if you can afford it. But regardless, just go check him out. He's a fantastic human being. We love him very much. Um, and so you should all love him too. Uh, and the last thing, on Monday, we released a video on this channel of Amy and I in a fiancé finance bundle battle. It is our second to last Fiance Finance Bundle Battle, so I encourage you to check it out. But also, next week on JAR, the punishment for that Fiance Finance Bundle Battle will be happening. It was not this week. It will be next week. 
And whichever one of us lost, because you're going to have to go watch the video, I'm not telling you, whichever one of us lost is going to suffer a punishment next week on JAR, and you will see that. But we wanted to give at least a week, at least a weekend, uh, for that video to be up for people to see it. So that video will also be linked at the end for you to check out probably somewhere up above my head here or at my chest level or something. Um, as I said, along with, with last week's JAR will be there as well as the subscribe button because YouTube is a thing and you guys know how YouTube works. So uh, I wanna thank you guys all so very much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully you have already, but otherwise please do give us your opinions, your feedback on mm -hmm. the episode, what you thought of our opinions, what your opinions were. Yes. Tell us all of that and more in the comments down below. You wanna just vent, we're here. Uh, <laughs> that's what the comments are for, talk to us. Um, but let us know what's going on, what you thought of the video, etc. This has been another episode of JAR, here on Geek For All. I have been Joe. You forgot Vorthos Pride. I hadn't forgotten it. I mean, I kind of had, but I was going to do it after this, but that's fine. Oh, okay. So, so I've been Joe. I'm Amy. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us as we all, you and us, showed off our... Hashtag Vorthos Pride. <laughs> I was trying to cover it because I had slightly forgotten it, but I was going <laughs> to fix it afterwards. But you caught me, and I appreciate you calling me on my BS. Yeah. So <laughs> Thank you guys so much once again. And as we always say, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.